What's up, guys? Happy Sunday. So, of course, on Friday, we know that the market had a huge red day. So in today's video, I'm just going to look at all of the large tech stocks. We're going to look at the ETFs. We're going to look at everything as a whole and see what the next steps are. All right. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. So number one, let's take a look at the large tech stocks. Uh, so this is Microsoft. We can see that Microsoft's MACD has not yet started moving uh, lower yet. Whereas the price action of the stock itself is very dramatically weak, right? So we can see that Microsoft is trading outside of the lower Bollinger Band, showing uh, it's starting to get very overextended. Okay, so that's Microsoft. Take a look at Google. Same concept. Amazon, not as overextended. All right. Um, let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla is not that overextended to the downside either. And then when you look at Apple, Apple is at a very, very major level of uh, support here, which is 163.62, and it closed right at that level. So we see that Apple is sitting at very major support, and the other large tech stocks are trading outside of the lower level of the Bollinger Band. So, so far, we can see that tech is showing a lot of weakness, all right? So now, obviously, when taking a look at the NASDAQ, the QQQ is trading outside of the lower level of the Bollinger Band as well. But this doesn't automatically mean that we're going to bounce. All right. It is likely, right? It's a likely possibility that we will bounce because uh, we had a over 4% red day. And usually when we have over 4% red day on the NASDAQ, not always. And recently, this has also really became... Um, harder but having a four percent red day usually leads to the next day being green so i'm not saying that's going to be an automatic thing but essentially what i'm going to be looking at on monday is ideally ideally for the most bullish scenario for a bounce and it would be the safest play would be if we gap down and uh if we open outside the lower bollinger man that would make the trading day uh astronomically easier so anyway we can see that the nasdaq is trading outside the b bands uh let's take a look at the spy the spy is not as overextended uh but we can see that once we broke this uh <laughs> this layer of support here at around 411 uh we just cascaded down so now i mean obviously we have the same like psychological levels at 400 at 403 um to the downside on the spy and we're just gonna have to see if those levels hold uh for a bounce but we can clearly see right now the spy is not overextended to the downside according to the bollinger bands it's not algorithmically overextended okay and uh also let's take a look at the iwm so now relative to the weakness that we saw in the spy and the nasdaq the iwm is still trading within the bollinger bands so it's not overextended to the downside at all so if there is continued weakness the nasdaq is most likely going to be leading this weakness uh as you can see the iwm is still not you know showing that much uh weakness so um we're gonna know which uh, essentially we know which um uh, etf essentially to go short if we are extremely bearish and also during that meeting, Powell said a lot of bearish stuff. And this entire move upwards was just a perfect opportunity for people to load up on shorts. So now that um, the market has showed its hand, essentially, now it's just a matter of how low can we go and how fast uh, we can fall. After a huge, huge move on Friday that we had, like after a huge move downwards, uh, so much of the analysis and everything that um, we're going to have to take a look at is going to be dependent on Monday's open. So between now until futures open, futures can open green for all we know, right? But it all really depends on what happens before 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, there's so, there's like really, really like, you could just flip a coin at this point obviously we know that the overall direction of the market is bearish the momentum is bearish but a lot of that can just be changed but so far um we need to keep a bearish bias until proven otherwise so it's a good sign that we are getting very overextended to the downside on the tech stocks 
uh, namely on the Nasdaq as well. But if they start to turn up, then uh, the market itself can uh, have a few choppy days once uh, accumulation is finished, right? So say, for example, we're down here, <clears throat> we can fall a bit lower and just accumulate, create another leg down and then continue falling lower. So, I mean, it's not going to be as simple, most likely, right? So, yeah, honestly, I mean, like a lot of this is going to be touch and feel uh, heading into next week. And uh, yeah, after a huge move like this, it's almost impossible to judge what's going to happen next. But clearly, this is very, very weak. There is a lot more room to the downside on the NASDAQ, especially. And we are not algorithmically overextended to the downside. So there's, a, there's still a lot more room to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys tomorrow. And uh, I'll be live streaming, trading, everything as usual. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Thank you.